embarrassing incident at the celebrations is still in Lady Nessie's mind. She has some relief from the success of the royal event. Talk of the Fay Court's beauty has spread throughout Dragon Valley. The Verdington family's prestige has grown. Queen Ivy wishes to enhance this influence with the birth of a girl in the castle. And so, she has approached Lady Nuala. It is the hero's turn to offer what she can for the court. Since Lady Nuala has no one in mind, the monarch has made a match for her. He isn't a looker by any means, and known as a loner in town, but the hero is content. Perhaps she thinks his obscurity is well suited to having a girl, one he will leave entirely to the court. There is some merit in his soft eyes, but Lady Nuala is more absorbed in the aftermath of their union. The queen has already shown disfavor with Lady Nessie, and if the hero can produce a girl, she will have secured her place in the monarch's eyes, and that matters to Lady Nuala more than anything. So she finds herself laughing, swaying, and gazing at the male presented to her with excitement. Hello everyone, this is Fantasy Ask, and welcome back to The Sims 3 Fairy Amazon with the Vernington Fay Court. Before we begin, I want to say a very special welcome to my channel members. Thank you so, so much for your support. I appreciate it immensely. We're going to take a second before diving in to chat about some changes we've had in the castle and some ideas that have spawned in my mind as a result of the comments you guys have written. So I am super excited for this episode because we're about to have our second breeding between Lady Nuala, a fabulous hero, and this male fairy we're not going to squint too hard at because we just want the end result of whatever this is going to be. And he's going to be long forgotten unless he leaves an imprint on his child, in which case it'll be disastrous. But you know what? I think this will allow us to have a very wide and interesting scope of ladies in our court. And that's just going to make our characters in the future even more awesome and fun to keep track of. But okay, before we get on with this, I want to show you guys the changes that I have made in the castle. So like I said before, I was going to get our nursery prepped. And also, while getting our nursery prepped, I figured let's go fix up this bathroom. Oh my goodness, tree, get out of the way. Fix up this bathroom down here. So I have gone ahead, used our theme colors of black, white, blue and pink which I love and mint of course used our theme colors and we've got a little bit of like periwinkle in there I think um, so now our ladies can use that kind of restroom area without me feeling like I, I just I don't know why I was avoiding it before maybe because it didn't look that nice but I'm really happy with the change that fits in with the throne room and that makes me absolutely delighted um, and I'm allowing my ladies to use this part of the the castle now slowly we're gonna transform everything but just Little, little things at a time, guys. Little things at a time. Now, I'm most excited about our upstairs because, guys, voila! We have the butler's room over here. So previously, this was a really tiny nursery, and I figured, you know what? We're probably going to have more than one baby in the castle at a time. So I didn't feel as though this was the right kind of place, but I figured we need a butler, and a butler does have to sleep somewhere. So I just turned this into a butler's room, they're going to have access to this, and then I'm going to give them access to all of the other ladies' rooms, which are going to be locked for themselves. So hopefully this way we can have someone cleaning and fixing stuff um, that are in our ladies' quarters without me having to like unlock all the time, or maids and other public service people being locked out. And then right next to this butler's room, we have the nursery and the playroom, which I love. So I figured we'll have the butler right next to the kids as well, because, you know, it just makes it easier for them to look after them. And I feel like the butler's room is quite well situated. It's like in the middle of the castle in terms of levels, so they can go up, they can go down. Um, they're right next to the kids, and they're also on the same level as the queen, should the queen require anything. So that's kind of fun. 
but I'm using the exact same layout um, for the bathrooms and the color scheme for all like the public bathrooms and the nursery and the butler's room. Um, I'm not going to whack my head too hard for that. But over here we have our nursery portion. So I had these like vintage uh, prams that you can use as cribs. I don't think you can use them as prams. They are cribs, I'm fairly sure. I downloaded them a few years back, maybe a year or two back, but I've never used them in the game. And I thought, you know what? It looks so cute in this room. So I threw them in here. We're going to have all of our babies and toddlers sleeping in this adorable thing. I'm hoping it works just fine. If not, then I have to swap it. That's okay. I'll get around to it. But regardless, it looks adorable. And also, I thought, sun, not a sun dial, a moon dial, right? Yes. <laughs> I thought, let's pop in a moon dial. One, because it's a pretty sculpture. Two, I feel as though... We could have some really interesting cultural thing for the fairies where maybe this moon dial is kind of auspicious for the babies and the babies draw a portion of their, you know, little fairy powers from this moon dial. Since the fairies do love moonlight and such, I just felt it was appropriate. So I'm really happy about that. It's almost like growing little plants in sunlight. You need to grow your fairy babies in the moonlight. So we have a little archway. So I have like two doors that I left from the original way the rooms were set out. But I've gone, uh, I've gone ahead and put down an archway on the other side over there so that we have just more ease of access. And then this room is filled with all of the toys a child could want, um, including like a little potty chair for them to get trained at. And we have our one and only fairy house in the castle right over here as well. And I'm telling you guys, this fairy house... Like, it is going to do 90% of that work for raising these fairy babies. I don't even think the butler's going to have to do anything. Apart from changing the baby's diaper and maybe training them how to potty. You don't have to. Like, the fairy babies are attracted to this fairy house and they use it to fulfill all of their needs. So, I'm kind of excited for how that's going to pan out. Also, because of the fairy house, all of our ladies are really attracted to the playroom. So, they keep coming in here to check out... Um, you know, the fairy hangout, and to go ahead, drink Paula, and all of those kind of things. So I love that we have this going on. Well, that's pretty much all of the changes I have made to these two levels, so let me know what you guys think about that. And also, I will have to remember to get the queen to hire a butler, so I'm going to initiate that straight off the bat. Let's go ahead and call for services. Now, before we go back to Lady Nuala and getting her pregnant, I do want to chat really quickly about something that someone said that sparked an idea in my head. So, <laughs> um, I read a comment from Black Beauty Sister 3 talking about how they go ahead and deal with royal bo uh, boys in their game. So essentially, they have kind of like a broodmother sort of role that I have in my Vampire Amazon series, um, somewhere around, like, in the world, and essentially they send all of their royal boys to that particular person to be raised in a single household to make, like, prime breeding stock for the future. And that got me thinking. I don't think I want to go ahead and have a specific role where I keep all of the royal boys in a single household. I think I'll still adopt all of the boys out um, to either their fathers or families around town, but I am going to start keeping a royal registry um, in like my Google Sheets. So essentially what I'll do is all of the queen's boys are now going to be called princes. So the queen has decided that she is going to confer the title of prince upon all of the royal offspring, the royal males, and then she's going to confer the title of lord to all of the noble offspring, the noble males. So essentially, every time we have a male baby born, I am going to make sure that I note down their title and name in either the royal list or the noble list. So I have two going on right now. So I have like a register of royals and a register of nobles. Or a register and what? A register of princes and a register of lords, essentially, for royalty and nobility, two separate lists. And essentially, we're not going to have this in the first generation. We're going to have to obviously wait until the second generation because that's when our first fleet of boys are going to start growing up. But when we have a lady that's eligible to breed, if they don't have like a romantic interest in line, what we'll do is that we'll essentially pick someone from the royal registry. So we'll check the royal register and see if there's a male that's of eligible age, so like young adult or older. And then 
we'll breed him with whoever that lady in the court is. And if we have no eligible royals, then we'll move on to the noble list. And we'll see if we have any lords, young adult or older, who are lined up to go ahead and breed with someone. And it'll essentially go from oldest to youngest, so like Prince Callum was born first. So in the next generation, like once he's young adult and older, if we have a lady, like the hero or someone unrelated, who needs to go ahead and breed with someone and she doesn't have a romantic interest, then we'll choose Prince Callum to be her mate because he's kind of like the first one in the royal register, if that makes sense. So that's how I'm planning to do things. And then obviously if we have no royals, if we're really lucky and we keep having girls, and we have no royals and nobles um, to breed with anyone, then I'll go ahead and start pulling sims from the rest of the world. But that was a lot of yammering. I hope that made sense to you guys, but I am really excited about the prospect of this royal register. So thank you so much to Black Beauty Sister 3 for your brilliant idea about how you do things in your game, which helped inspire me as to what I'm gonna do in my game. And this is exactly the fun of hearing about the way you guys do the challenges in your own games because it helps spark like the coolest ideas, which I would never have thought of on my own. That that would I my like mine would not have gone there if someone had not told me that they were doing something in their game that way. So thank you. I think that is so flippin' cool and brilliant. But okay, let's go ahead, Lady Nuala Orion. Oh yeah, like I said, Queen Ivy. Hello little baby. He's now Prince Callum Buddington, which is so exciting. Uh, and I did go ahead and like check how long the names can be, because I was scared if I had titles in there, we would have to cut down on the name suggestions, um, or like the letter of names, but it's fine, it's fine, because we could have a baby like princess something. Princess is a fairly long word, which you can't fit in The Sims 4, but in The Sims 3, you can! So I flip and love that. Now the only thing is that our noble females, I won't have a title for their name, they'll just have the name until they take on the role and then they'll get the title of lady. So I'll do that, but then for our princesses, they'll have princess, our royal males will have prince, and then our noble males will have lord. All the way from birth, you guys, yes, all the way from when they're a baby. Just so we can keep track of them a little bit easier in the game, like if we see someone who's like lord something, prince something, we'll be like, ah, they're related to us somehow, how cool! And then we'll get to see how they look as they get older as well. But okay, Nuala. I'm, I'm done. I'm done yammering. I promise. I promise, guys. I'm done. Let's go and get some action going for her. So I am going to open up her chambers. So we're going to unlock. And then she is going to lead this male over here for a woohoo so she can have that baby. Also, I did have a few people letting me know that, oh, where's our butler? We want, to, how long did it take you to get this sorted woman? Butler, there we go, there we go. But yes, I did ha have a few people suggesting to me um, that when you get your sims to boohoo, typically you can tell they're pregnant if you hear the baby jingle, which I am aware of guys, but a lot of the times I just prefer to play without my headphones. So essentially the game is on mute for me and in that case, it's just easier for me to check the phone. Yeah. Oh look, a butler's already here. Nice. What's her name? Um, this is Felicia Roman. Okay, Felicia, let's go ahead and get your rooms sorted. So hold on a second. So we're gonna lock... Oh geez. Let's specify sims for this door. Darn it, can the butler not come here? Unlock. Um... This is irritating. Well, I want the butler. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'll just have to unlock this door. I think I can set the butler's bed though. So I'll just set that as Felicia's bed. And unfortunately this means that I can't give the butler access to like any of our other rooms, which kind of sucks. Hmm. So you know what? I'm just gonna have to unlock all of our chambers, which makes me really, really sad. But hopefully if everyone's beds are kind of, I'll just, I'll just unlock guys. I'll just unlock. Because then we can't have the butler kind of fixing things. Hopefully me setting their bed as something is gonna keep, yeah, unlock that, is gonna keep um, 
the sims from going into the wrong rooms but i'll leave that be otherwise it becomes too complicated i need the butler to be able to fix things you know to be able to go go places and clean stuff as well so i'll leave that be i'll leave that be but yeah i did check the attraction like i got her to what was it consider attraction for this for this um sim Derek Alden, he's one of the original Dragon Valley Townies. She gave him a 10 out of 10. And I was like, interesting. <laughs> interesting. The male the queen bred with looked better. He actually looked better. So I have a feeling Prince Callum is going to be a very cute sim. No, no thank you. He's going to be a cutie. As for Nuala's child, I don't know, guys. I don't know. This baby is seriously up in the air. <laughs> this baby is seriously up in the air. Hopefully, the baby gets Nuala's features. I mean, I think it'll be okay if, if the baby gets the father's eyes. Um, he's got dark brown eyes, like really dark brown eyes. And he's got he's got a decent eye shape. They kind of look like a nose. They're pretty big. But if he gets, if the baby gets the father's eyes, um, and I think they both have the pastel skin tone, like the rainbow skin tone, so, the baby's skin tone, if it's between Nuala's purplish blue and the father's green, somewhere in there, um, it might have a nice skin tone, actually. The baby might have a nice skin tone. I'm not a big fan of the green, though. I'm not a big fan of the green, so I hope it's not green or yellow. But anything on, like, the bluer side might be nice. Chloe O'Reilly, yes, talk to your mother. She's turning old. Okay, let's go ahead and check... To see if she is pregnant. Oh, yes! Lady Nuala O'Brien is pregnant, guys! Okay, that's awesome. I'm super excited. And now you need to um, where, let, what, let, let him know. Nope, nope. Get out of the bed. Get out of the bed. We wanna, we wanna... We're ending things. Can she not be mean to him? Woman, how can you not be mean to him? Just tell him. Oh, there we go. There we go. I was being, I was, I was, um, I was a little bit concerned for a second. We're going to be, we're going to ask him to be friends. He's going to be, uh, decidedly upset about this, but dude, you've done what you had to do and now you can leave. Yes, he's heartbroken. She broke his heart. Does she care? She doesn't. She doesn't care. All she cares about is having that baby girl so that she can get the queen's favor. And let's ask him to leave now. And I am being really careful about making sure we end off, like, all romantic relations with any of the males that our sims breed with. Because I don't want to have issues where they are around town spreading rumors about our sims being cheaters. And that's going to make them harder to pair up with someone in the future. Look at this. Oh, she's doing her bed. That's nice. She's helping out. I was like, is she getting into Sparrow's bed? But no, she's not. She's not. But I'm excited, guys. I'm excited. Fingers crossed she's going to have a girl. Um, because we have the nursery ready. So maybe the agenda gods will actually be kind to us this time. Also, I was thinking about, like, what if our sims get the whim to have a boy? Because they don't know they're in the Amazon challenge, you know? Maybe they do. Maybe they do. But let's not think too hard about that. They're going to have whims sometimes um, where they want to have a boy instead of a girl. And that's going to give, like, a huge amount of lifetime reward points. So I was thinking, the way I'll deal with that, I'll actually save it when they want to have a boy. And the way I'll think about it is that if they want to have a boy when they get pregnant, that means they don't want to have, like, a girl from the guy they mated with. That's the way I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna process that. So for me, it's gonna be like, like, for, the, for example, the queen, she wanted a girl, right, in her first pregnancy. So she was completely fine. Um, she was happy to have a girl from Michael McCarthy. But, for example, if Nawala has the whim, the desire to have a boy in this pregnancy... Hold on a second. If she wants to have a boy instead of a girl, then I'm going to say, you know what? She does not want to raise, a, 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 like, a girl. She does not want to raise a daughter from that man. <laughs> That's what I'm going to think of it as. So that way, we still get those points, and we kind of get a little bit of an insight into whether these sims are actually happy with the breedings they had or they're not happy with the pairings they had. I know there's an attraction school, but still, there might be various reasons for why they might approve of, you know, 
having a daughter from a certain male and why they might disapprove. So I think that's pretty fun. But okay, the ladies are feeling quite... They are tired. I've been getting Morrigan to practice a whole lot, have, like a whole lot of spells, which she has learnt, but I think she needs to relearn. See, this is what I was trying to prevent. People bathing in the queen's bathroom. Morrigan. Oh my goodness, Morrigan. I think she has to relearn those spells. Hmm. But I did get it to learn all of them, so that's interesting, but... Uh, how are we going to deal with this, guys? This is so frustrating. Like, at this point, having a butler is useless. At this point, having a butler is useless. Hmm. Hmm. Um, this is a little bit annoying. Because we shouldn't have others using the queen's quarters. This is the flippin' queen's quarters. But then I need everyone to have access so that the butlers can go ahead and clean up. You know what I'm gonna do, guys? We're gonna deal with this just the way it is right now. Uh, and try and direct our sims to use the proper facilities um, when they need to. But once we start having the girls in the castle become teens and they start living with their mothers, then I'm just gonna lock the doors again. And then the teens' job, essentially, will be... Like the younger sims job will be to clean up the the chambers that they're living in. So for example, if we have a princess, she's going to be in charge. It's part of learning humility, you know? She's going to be in charge of keeping the royal chambers clean. And then Morrigan's daughter is going to be in charge of keeping, uh, keeping her changes, changes? What am I saying? Chambers clean. So I think that's the way I'm going to do it. Hmm. Okay. Well, the ladies are... They're in all sorts of shapes right now. Not doing too good. Kind of feeling tired. Kind of not. Okay, Queenie, where are you? She's feeling stir crazy. So what I actually wanted to do... I did want to take my sims out to like a pond somewhere where they can skate. Because I know quite a few of the ladies want to skate with each other. And we don't have too long until winter's going to be done. So I thought that might be nice for us to go ahead and kind of get that going. Um, Nessie, you're also hungry. Get some autumn salad. Let's see, Lady Sparrow. Everyone's hungry, my goodness. Is anyone going to be able to get some food? Who's who's coming to grab food? Guys, go, go eat. Okay, here comes Nuala. Now the funny thing that I've noticed sometimes in the kitchen is that if Nuala cooks something or if Nessie cooks something, Nuala will refuse to eat that and she'll make exactly the same thing, but she'll make it like a herself. She'll make a separate dish and then she'll eat from that dish, which is so funny. Um, yeah. Also, I know Lady Nessie had that really embarrassing incident in the throne room in the last episode um, when the queen refused to take a gift. But as a result of that, I think Nessie realized that she's kind of becoming out of touch with the monarch. So she did have a, a wish to become friends with the queen. So I did help her work on that. And she is now friends with the queen again. So their relationship has been repaired, which thank goodness. Um, also, Hugh Grey spent, like, I don't know how many days in the castle after that event. He was just hanging around, lounging outside and sleeping on the lounges and talking to all the ladies. So by this point... All the ladies know him, but of course he still has his flame with Lady Nessie, so that's kind of good. I'm glad that she has a mint head elf slated for herself. Or fairy, sorry, fairy slated for herself. Okay, has everyone finished eating? Because I want to take you guys skating. Uh, yes. Okay, Morrigan, it's fine. You can deal with it. Let's take everyone skating. Uh, we have a pond here, thank goodness. Like a pond really close by. The feudal fishing spot, which we have been to a few times. Unfortunately, the rivers here, they don't freeze over. But we can go to this lake. So let's go over here with everyone in the house. I think it'll be a nice night out. They can get some moonlight, fingers crossed. Uh, which will make the fairies feel really good. And everyone can spend some time bonding, skating around the place. So that'll be nice. And I know the queen, Morrigan... No, Mor not Morrigan. The queen... Sparrow, Nessie, they're all feeling stuck crazy, so I think it'll be good for them to get out of the get out of the house. Okay, let's get going, let's get going. And I wonder if Lady Nuala is gonna have like an alien anomaly like the Queen did 
um, before her pregnancy kind of saved her from being probed by mysterious creatures. <laughs> oh my goodness. Imagine what would have happened if that were the case. I don't think female sims in The Sims 3 can get impregnated by aliens. I think it's just males. But that would have been so weird and wacky. How would they have explained things? Like a metal dragon just came and sucked the queen into the sky. <laughs> that would have been such a difficult thing to explain to the elven folk. Such a difficult thing to explain. But okay. Here we go. Is the lake Oh, darn it. Is it not frozen over? You're joking. No! How is this not frozen over? I'm so sad. Hold on a second. Is there another lake anywhere nearby that might be potentially frozen? Let's just check, guys. Let's just check. I was hoping to go somewhere close to home because then they're going to get really tired and this trip is going to become pointless anyways. Okay, nothing down here. Is that the only pond we have in town? That might be the only pond we have in town. Which is very strange. Huh. I mean, we have this flippin' lake. But this lake isn't frozen either. Is it too far along in winter for the lakes to be frozen, I wonder? Okay, there's this park. But that doesn't look frozen either. Darn it! I'm kind of upset. I really wanted to have a frozen lake so our ladies can go ahead and skate. Hmm. Maybe it's too late now. Maybe the, the lakes, the ponds, I mean, have already started defrosting. Hmm. Like, they've already started melting. That kind of sucks. I was getting really excited, guys. I know when Lady, like, earlier on in the series, when we had... Lady Sparrow come here. I think when they came to get Morgan, to scout Morgan, the the pond was frozen. So they could have skated then and there. That's okay though. If you guys want, you can just stick around and create some snow pals. Snowmen. What is Lady Sparrow doing? She's... What are you doing? Oh my goodness. Woman, I sent you out with everyone. <laughs> I sent you out with everyone, Sparrow. I don't know what Sparrow's doing. Sparrow, go meet up with everyone. Go meet up with everyone. I don't know why she didn't come. Hmm. She's gonna try to catch up with the rest of the ladies. I could have just sent them to the beach at this point. They could have gone out and, like, swam in the water or something. That's fine. Oh, look! The queen's building an igloo. That's nice. Actually, we had an igloo out front. And we had an igloo in front of the castle. I could have actually gotten Noala to... Try for a baby in the igloo. Darn it. I missed my chance. I missed my chance. We could have had that happen. That would have been interesting. I was also thinking about, like, what I would do if our ladies wanted to get married. Um, because I feel like jealousy in The Sims 3 is a little bit more intense than The Sims 4, which makes the whole Amazon way of doing things a little bit problematic. And I also don't know. Um... What I'm going to do about, like, having them get married outside of the castle, in, like, within the court. I'm not entirely sure yet. We'll have to see as we play. But I know a lot of the times when they breed with the males, even if they're not in a relationship or I've, like, cut off all ties, then when they get pregnant, they will have a desire to marry them. Like, the queen has had a desire to marry Michael. Um... Michael McCarthy twice, uh, which I've just cancelled because I, that doesn't make sense to me for the story because she's a queen, so one, she cannot, I feel as though she shouldn't be wanting to marry a male because there has been an incident in her history where her grandmother married a male and then when he became king, the fairy population started declining and essentially their royal family started declining. So I feel as though she would be adverse to marrying a male herself. So if she did want something, it would be marrying one of the ladies in her court. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do about that. But also I was thinking, even if we have a romance naturally developed between the ladies, um, how is that going to work? Because they're going to get jealous if, you know, their partner goes ahead and starts flirting around with sims around town. So I figured... We wouldn't have any weddings 
until after the breeding season. So when I play my Amazon challenges, there is a breeding season in every generation. So for example, for this generation, the breeding season started when the queen got pregnant. And it's going to end when we have our final child, which for me, um, the way I like to play, I have a limit in each generation of five children. It works the same for Vampire Amazon. So I have a limit of five children and essentially I keep my breeding cycle going. So the breeding season will continue until the fifth daughter is born. And then our breeding season ends. So I'm thinking after the breeding season is when we'll encourage like marriages and stuff because then our ladies won't have to cheat unless they want to for the, for the purpose of story. But you know, they won't have to breed anymore and that won't cause any issues in their romance. That's kind of the way I'm thinking of handling all of that. I feel like that was a lot of talking. But then again, the whole point of, an ep of a let's play is for me to be talking, right? <laughs> but yeah, I've been thinking of those things, guys. Let me know what you guys think. And also, I know we have five ladies, including our queen. And that's why I like having a limit of five children. Because the way I have my breeding cycle, there's no guarantee that each sim is going to have one daughter. Some sims might not have any daughters. Some might have two. Some might have three. I don't know. Four or five. So I feel like it makes it more fun to see which bloodline continues and which one doesn't. And that's why I said that a few episodes back. That some of these ancient um, lineages that we have, they're not going to last a generation or two later. Like, they'll be gone. Which is going to be tragic. But it makes it more interesting for me. It gives space for other bloodlines to come in, you know, fresh blood, all those kind of things. And it makes the lions who survive more special to me. But okay, guys, with that said and done, I'm going to leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, Nuala, did you just puke? She just puked. I think, I think she's slowly but surely finding out that something's different about her. Wait a second. What is- what is- I'm supposed to be leaving. What are you doing? Oh, I thought she was fighting with someone. Okay, guys. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. <laughs>